Hey guys, what's up? Mike Rockin from Rockin Audio Tech Reviews here, back again with another review. And today for review number two, we are going to check out the pretty cool looking Blue Yeti USB microphone. I'm gonna go over all the features of the Yeti and we'll take a look at it in depth. We'll do some audio tests, we'll install it and all that stuff first, of course, too. Hopefully, after you're done watching this video, you'll be a little bit better informed as to whether this is the right USB microphone for you or not. So are you ready? Let's get into it. We'll start out by taking a look at what's in the box. This is the box. This is the microphone with the attached base, and you also get a nine foot USB cable. For those of you already wondering, yes, you can detach the mic from this base and then mount this on just a regular mic stand. Uh, maybe you wanna put this in a nice spider mount and get some isolation from vibration and transmission noise. So yeah, you can do that. But for those of you who want a nice stand for your desk, this stand is really cool. It's nice and heavy. But there is one problem with it, and we will go over that just a little bit later in the audio test. Now the Blue Yeti comes in a few different flavors, actually three. The one that I'm reviewing today is just the standard version. There's one up from that called the studio version, which gives you um, some additional recording software. And then one step above that is called the pro version. You have an XLR out. And the other thing the pro version has is that it ups the sample and bit rates from 16-bit 48 kilohertz of the first two versions to 24-bit and 192 kilohertz for the Pro version. Now in the standard version of the Yeti, you actually have a pretty wide range of colors to choose from. There's blackout, platinum, vintage white, silver, midnight blue, satin red, slate, space gray, teal, and whiteout. Now as you could already see, I chose the very lovely Space Gray. It's quite tasty. It's got a nice depth to it, how it kind of like changes in the light a little bit. That was the choice for me. You may go for the red, the black, or the white, or another color, maybe the teal. It's up to you. All of them are pretty much at the same price. At the time of this video on Amazon, that was right around 128, 129. Now, I know what you might be thinking, 130 bucks for a USB microphone. My last microphone was like 10, 20, maybe 30 bucks and it was fine. Well, you get a lot of professional features with the Blue Yeti. Let's take a look at those. So let's start on the front of the mic. We've got a mute button and we've got a volume control for headphones. If you need to cough while you're recording or you need to talk to someone privately while you're on a live stream, you can just tap the mute button and it'll change from solid red when it's plugged in to flashing red, which tells you it's on mute. And you can take care of whatever you need to do, then boom, just tap the button, come back on the stream. Now, here's where it's kind of a cool game changer, the headphone output. As you can see, there's a headphone input jack you can monitor what you're recording in real time with no latency. Normally, if you record through an audio interface, there's gonna be a little bit of latency if you're monitoring through the audio interface. And even if you get that down to a pretty short delay, it can still be annoying when you're doing something critical like a voiceover application. I really appreciate that feature about the Yeti. It's pretty awesome. While we're at the bottom, let's also look, we've got the USB input right here, or actually output and you plug the mini end of the USB cable into that, plug your other end into the computer, and you're good to go. You've also got a regular microphone mount right here threaded, so you can fit it on any mic stand. Then moving around to the back, we've got a gain knob so you can adjust your audio out from the Yeti into your computer, which makes it real easy to control your levels. You have a pattern selector. I'm gonna put this in front of the camera so you can see that. So right there, you can choose the polar pattern of your microphone. Now, if you're not familiar with recording or mics that have that feature, I'll explain real briefly. So you have four different choices. Other mics that do have these choices are usually a little bit higher end, cost a little bit more, and are in the professional realm. So the three main choices are cardioid pattern, an omnidirectional pattern, and a bidirectional pattern. Cardioid pattern would be I'm talking to the microphone like this. This is the front of the mic. This is the only area that the mic's gonna record. So if something's talking out here, someone's talking over here, there's some noise over here, 
it's not gonna pick it up as well as it's gonna pick my voice up. That's good for isolating your voiceover from the environment, especially if you have a noisy environment. All right, option number two on the polar pattern, uh, bi-directional. So if I'm hosting a podcast and it's just me and another person, so I can talk into this end and then the person sitting across from me will be picked up from this side. The two left and right sides are not picked up. So if you have a two person conversation, say across the table from each other, this is a good thing to have on the, the Yeti. Now the third option is omnidirectional. So anything in the room is gonna be picked up equally by the mic. Then another game changer, we've got the fourth option, which is stereo on the Blue Yeti. Now stereo option is usually only available on higher end mics and certainly not a USB microphone. I think this may be the only USB microphone that has a stereo option. If I find out different, I'll correct that in the description. But what that means is that this is a pretty good mic for recording acoustic guitar or maybe a choir where you want a nice left to right stereo image or even a small ensemble band that's non-amplified, non-electrified. So that's pretty cool to have those choices. So now we're gonna jump right into the audio demonstration and I'll show you those polar patterns at work. But first, before we do that, we've got a little work to do installing it. And by a little work, literally, all you have to do is connect the mini USB end into the microphone, connect the other end into your computer. If you're on a Mac like me, just go into your system preferences, go into sound, and then select the Blue Yeti as the microphone input, you are done. All right guys, so here we go. Let's test the audio of the Blue Yeti microphone. Now, as you can see and hear, I've already switched that and you'll notice immediately that this does sound a lot better than the lavalier mic I was using. Um, so that's, we're already ahead of the game. So right now I have it on the cardioid mic pattern, which is, so the microphone only picks up what's in front of it. So you can hear me talking right now. And then if I turn the mic away to the side, it starts losing my voice. And then we'll just come right back around to the front and it can hear me again. Now you'll notice you're going to hear some of this. That's cable noise, and I uh, apologize if that's coming through. Um, but this mic is susceptible to picking up transmission noise through the cables and through the desk. Just want you to be aware of that, and I'll mention that again in the video later. So now let's switch the mic pattern to bidirectional. So bidirectional, again, is the mic only picks up what's in front of it and what's behind it. So I'm talking in front of it. Now I'm talking on the side and we're coming around to the back and it's picking me up again. Talking on the other side. Now all the way back around to the front and it's picking me up again. So as you could hear, it was only picking up on the front and back, not the sides. Good for a two person conversation. So now let's switch to the third choice. All right, now we've got it set on omnidirectional. And if you'll recall, omnidirectional picks up everything that's in the room. So as I turn this to the side and I keep talking, you'll notice that my voice never quite goes away. It kind of stays even. Maybe there's a slight bump at the front and back, but it's still picking me up on the sides as I spin this all the way around. Okay, so now that's good for a round table discussion or if you just wanna pick up group ambience, every, everything that's going on in the room. Now we'll go to the fourth and coolest option, stereo. Okay, now this will probably be a little bit weird if you have headphones on, but as I spin the mic, you're gonna hear my voice travel in a pattern through the speakers back and forth to the left and to the right and we're back on the front and it's even now we'll just go back the other way and you can hear my voice as it's traveling around the stereo field and we're back in front so that's a demonstration of the stereo ability of this mic it's really cool and as i mentioned before you can use that to record acoustic guitar or a small unamplified ensemble in front of you or maybe a choir if you want a nice 
left-right stereo image. So now I'm going to switch back to cardioid. So for voiceover applications, I, I gotta imagine probably most of you are most interested in just how this performs and you can get a sense in my normal conversational tone as I'm talking right now. And I know some of you may like to get up close to the mic and work it like that. I haven't been doing that because I don't have a windscreen on this one. And you know I don't wanna pop peas because that's very annoying. This is what the mic sounds like when you're talking just in front of it on the cardioid mic pattern about 10 inches from it. And here's, whoops, here's what it's, <laughs> almost tripped over my light. Here's what it sounds like maybe two feet back from it. And again, this is what it sounds like up close. So that'll about wrap it up for the audio test. Hopefully that's given you a sense of what can be accomplished choosing the different polar mic patterns. Pretty cool. Oh, one quick thing I, I might expand on just a little bit. So we were talking about some of that noise that's transmitted through the cable or if you're tapping on the desk. Even just adjusting the knobs or if you want to like twist this knob, you hear how loud that is. So that's something you do have to be careful of if you adjust things when you're recording. Oh, also one more thing. A uh, quick test of the mute button. So I'm talking right now. Obviously, the mute button isn't on, and we'll turn. And that's the mute button. And I'll actually turn this around and push it and show you what it looks like with the flashing. So I hope that audio demonstration has shed a little bit of light on the benefits of having the ability to select a microphone's polar pattern. And again, that's kind of an unusual thing on a USB microphone, but it's an even more unusual option to have a stereo choice. So I've spent about three weeks with the Yeti now, and I'm gonna go over my likes and dislikes about it. On the positive side, I think you already got this, but I really like the way it looks. I don't think there's a cooler looking USB microphone out there, or for that matter, there's not a whole lot of cooler looking professional mics. So big thumbs up to Blue for the way this looks, the design, the build quality, all that good stuff. And it's worth mentioning again that if you wanna mount this just on your desk or a tabletop surface, this is a very cool base. I mean, it's just sturdy, solid, it's heavy, it looks cool, it matches the mic perfectly. If you're the person who likes to make a statement, this mic makes a statement. Another cool thing about the Blue, installation is a total breeze, it's just plug and play. And if you need to get up and go and just record a quick voiceover, if you're making a video or something else, you just hit record on your DAW and talk. That's it, no complicated setup. The other two things I really like about the Yeti are, of course, the mute button on the front and the headphone control and the ability to use a headphone and have latency-free monitoring while you're recording. To me, that is essential. And after this point, I would never buy another USB microphone that didn't have the ability to plug in headphones into it and bypass any latency that's introduced from your recording system. So now a few things about the Yeti that I don't especially like. I do not like the plastic buttons. Here, here, on the back, and especially these two on the sides. The problem is, number one with these two on the sides, I feel like I'm gonna over tighten them and they're gonna crack. Now, I don't have any evidence that that's happened. Um, I didn't see anything online about it, uh, but I didn't really research it too well. I just know from the way it feels, everything about this feels expensive except these plastic knobs. And then these knobs on the front, I don't know if you can see this, I'm gonna stick it right in the camera. Do you see how that's moving back and forth within the housing? The back ones do it too. I don't like that, that's cheap. That would be cool if they could just fix the wiggle and upgrade these buttons and knobs to metal. I think that would make this even more cool than it already is. So the next negative, this is a small one, but it doesn't ship with a windscreen or pop filter. Um, those are cheap, you know, 12 bucks or less. 
the sound of this has kind of a bite on the top end. I think a windscreen might like tame that down a little bit and it would just have been nice if Blue would have included one of those in the packaging. Another thing that I touched on briefly, so I think the mute button is cool, but I don't like the visual feedback it gives. When the mic is on, it's just solid red, and then when you want to mute, it goes to blinking red. If you're like me and you leave this sitting on your desk all the time in front of your workstation or computer, you're going to have this muted most of the time and it's going to be blinking at you constantly. The only way to get rid of that is turn it around backwards or unplug it. And finally, the last negative thing about the Blue Yeti is if you remember back to the audio test video, the noise that transmits through the bass if you're using the bass it comes with, uh, you've got to be very careful not to bump your desk or slide the microphone on it or you know, drop something on it because that noise will transmit straight through the desk, through the bass, into your recording, and it does sound very loud. It comes through really clear, so you have to be extra careful if you're using the included bass. All right, guys, so let's get right down to the final verdict on the Blue Yeti USB microphone. Are we gonna rock it or let it roll? We're gonna okay, rock it. Once I took all the pros and cons into account, the pros far outweighed the cons, and I can fully recommend the Blue Yeti USB microphone as a good purchase. And I might add, uh, I'm recording this just a couple days after Thanksgiving. Amazon is running the special on the Yeti right now. It's only 89 bucks. That's 40 bucks off the regular price. Thanks again for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed the review. If you did, please like and subscribe. And uh, I'll be back soon with another tech review here on Rockin' Audio Tech Reviews. I'm Mike, and remember, always, always keep it rockin'.